I will do my demonstration using Amazon. <laughs> Let's hope that it actually goes well. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, and we already have prepared uh, accounts for you uh, for this afternoon if your own accounts doesn't work. So, uh, let's see if we can figure out what's going on with your own accounts and if for some reason you are not able to launch our a uh, AMI, we'll use our own. So, um, as John already said this morning, QuickMD is a VMD in MD plugin, which means that it's inside VMD by default. If you have the latest uh, VMD version, QuickMD will be inside, and it automatically launches uh, NAMD to perform the simulations. It directly connects to NAMD, and you can see your simulations running online. And that's what I'm going to show you today. So, first of all, trying to start our AMI, in the AMI, we go to the marketplace, right? Let's just increase here. Um, yes, it's the one that I want to, to use. Press continue. If Amazon wants to cooperate, cooperate with me, it will work. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll switch to my own laptop. Okay. Uh, again, we we'll have to change the key pair. So as I'm using my group account, I have a bunch of key pairs avail available to me, and you also have all these lists if you use our own account. So please select your own key pair. Give the name to the key pair file of your own user, and use that key pair when launching this AMI, okay? So mine is JK Bayer. I didn't say my name, by the way, so I'm joking, but I right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I select my key pair, I launch my AMI, so now if everything goes well, it will show up here that it's starting, yes it is. So as you can see here in the key pair, so that's why I'm telling you to name your key pair accordingly, see, it's telling the key pair that I'm using. And now I know that this is the AMI, the image that I just launched. Okay, so now I'm just waiting for this to start, and don't panic. This step take about one or two minutes. Don't start, press, kill, and terminate, and run again, over and over again. So just be a little, have a little bit of patience. <coughs> While it, it's starting, I'm setting up my connection, my DCB connection. Again, I use my IP address. So now people on Facebook can access my own AMI. Actually, they can't because they don't have my key pair. So <clears throat> nice that Amazon thinks about these kind of things. So once this is running, I will be able to actually access my Amazon image. Let's see if I can do that. Nope. And by the way, during my presentation, please ask for everything you want. Uh, we have time, and this is supposed to be an interactive session. Otherwise, I will be talking for 10 minutes and I'm done. Uh, <laughs> so please ask. It's, that's why we are doing the live demo. It's for you to understand what you're going to do this afternoon. So it's not ready yet. Not ready yet. Yeah. So you, you said that program we needed to download separately, right? Yes, this is the DCV, uh, oh, it's here. DCV viewer, uh, VNC viewer done by DCV, and that is basically a remote desktop. Enables you to connect to the remote session of your image. Hmm. Perfect. This is going quite well this morning. So if it doesn't work, okay, perfect. Let's go ahead. So I really, I could have this prepared before, but I really want to show you that this is takes time, okay? And before you go and launch more AMI, AMI, AMIs, that will cost you money. So just be careful with this process. So now my uh, remote, Visual is a remote machine is starting. 
and we will be able to work with QuickMD, DMD, and MD and do all the crazy things that John just showed us this morning, we can do in this machine. So all those rendering, using all the advanced techniques available inside UMD, we can use in here. Okay, so since we have now our own machine, supposedly. Uh, okay, perfect. Uh, we will start VMD. VMD can be run by a command line. You know, just go to the terminal after you install and you type VMD. Or in our image, you can just select this VMD icon and left click and it launch VMD. Okay, so you don't have to uh, work with environmental uh, global um, paths. You don't have to insert VMD path or MD path anywhere. We already prepared everything for you. Yeah. Uh, so if you generate files and save them, they will be saved in your computer or in the file? So it will be on the Amazon uh, instance. But as, if you go through the slides that I sent you yesterday, I uh, had some steps using FileZilla to transfer from the Amazon to your computer or to any place you want. So that is very easy. It also used the key pair uh, file uh, to authenticate, and it's easy. It's just drag and drop. You don't even need to to use the terminal. Okay. And by the way, all the steps to do what I'm doing now is available in our website. So if you have any difficulties, please tell us. Or if you don't understand the steps, please uh, tell us so we can fix. OK, so now we have VMD, right? I didn't do anything. Is the default VMD session. And now I want to start to use QuickMD. QuickMD is under extensions, simulation, and QuickMD. You guys can see, right? Even in the back. Can you, can you see? Perfect. So we launched QuickMD. Here it is. So QuickMD has two basic modes. Basic for the user that is not that well um, uh, used to MD simulation, he is, is trying to uh, start using MD simulation in his work, or doesn't he only wants to do a simple simulation and prepare very fast. So this is our easy or basic mode that is here to prepare. And we have the basic analysis mode, right? For preparing and analyzing, we have basic and advanced modes. So on the easy mode, what the user can do is load the structure, select the basic parameters of the simulation, meaning pressure, temperature, and length, and that's it. Select the solvent model, the implicit or explicit mode, prepare and run. That's the only thing that the user can do. Okay, and I will show you step by step how to go through all those parameters. On the advanced mode, on the other hand, user has access to uh, basically everything uh, about the, the simulation. So instead of just having you know temperature and simulation time on the basic mode right here. We will have actually our own protocols. So, and what I'm saying about our own protocols is actually the configuration file that you were preparing yesterday. You have access to the file. So, if I just want to go more advanced and, and know what exactly I'm doing, I can select by annealing um, protocol that is uh, set by QuickMD by default, and we press edit. It says that I want to save this as a template for to reuse in the future as I want to use this as my template. I would just say, you know, I don't want to save. And here it is, the configuration file that you guys were preparing yesterday. So everything that you were doing by hand yesterday is done automatically by QuickMD. So uh, the reason we are, first of all, the reason we are showing this today is actually to make you go through the hard part of doing yourself and know what's behind the scene. Because QuickMD is not a black box at all. It keep, lets you do whatever thing you want. Uh, someone asked me yesterday, Nandi can let you do whatever thing you want. He's expecting that you know what you're doing. 
So PKMD is, a, let's say, a plugin that helps you know what to do, okay? But does not replace the user. So if you go to the advanced mode and start to put 3,000 Kelvin of, of temperature, 20 atmospheres of pressure, it will do. Probably then they will crash, but it will let you do and prepare the simulation, okay? Uh, and not only you have access to all the, the, let's say, protocols, you have access to three different kinds of simulation. You have what we call the vanilla simulation, or regular simulation, maybe. We have the CRMD uh, in the advanced and basic mode. You also have here steer molecular dynamics. So basically, uh, helps you to prepare the pooling that uh, Raphael will talk about after me, uh, pulling experiments, uh, it help, uh, helps you to select the anchoring point and the pulling point and orient your molecule automatically. It does everything for you. So this is available on the easy and advanced mode. And on the advanced mode, there is an extra type, which is NDFF. So you guys can, from QuickMD, prepare NDFF simulation. Um, even though you if you guys go through the tutorial this afternoon, you will see QuickMD and BFF section in the QuickMD tutorial that connects directly QuickMD to NDFF. So you don't need to prepare PSF and PDB before and then go to NDFF GUI. Everything is integrated in the whole smooth process. Okay? So after that, after you prepare your simulation, you run your simulation on Amazon on Water Source or on local workstation, you can load the simulation back to QuickMD, and you have basic and advanced analysis, as I said. On uh, basic analysis, you have RMSDs, you have uh, plotting energies, and what we call the thermodynamics properties. We, it's temperature, pressure, and volume of your simulation, so you can see how stable is your simulation plots in terms of temperature, pressure, and volume, or you can see how your potential uh, and kinetics energy are uh, evolving during your simulation, okay? On the advanced analysis, uh, on this one, you have hydrogen bonds, you have the analysis of SMD forces, basically the forces that your system is experiencing while you're pulling. Uh, you have RMSF, you have solvent accessible surface area, you have contact area calculations. So all of these analysis, you don't need to produce one single common line. Everything is done through the GUI and by the GUI. Okay, so sometimes users ask me, can you do, can I use uh, PKMD code to automate my process? If you know how to read code, you can go extract and adapt to your own system. PKMD was not done to be uh, executed on a bash mode or a text mode, okay? So, and just to give you, to finish my overview about the GUI, of course I cannot cover all the features of PKD, but this is the basics of basics. As you can see all over the, the GUI, you have these blue uh, icons. This uh, I icon means info, and if you press, it will tell you Everything that you need to know of what QuickMD is doing, the default options, the theory behind, and even papers that you can read to know more about ND simulations and the process that you're preparing in specific. Okay? Any questions to know? So if we don't, let's just prepare. Uh, yeah. So what, what are the things that we cannot do? Because I want, because as a novice, I want to know. Like, well, I can use it, but do I even need to use regular BMD now? It like, depends. What are the what are the applications that are not implemented? If I, if I want to do it, I have to use BMD, and it's not implemented. There are lots, <laughs> to be honest. So if you ever take a look to VMD and name the user guide, it's just they are massive. They are huge. You have a lot of. Uh, features and commands and options that you can use. But for instance, you cannot, in from the VMD side, you cannot prepare um, symmetric structures. For instance, HID capsids or virus capsids that are uh, symmetric, 
you need to, uh, the process to prepare the instruction is different and it's not yet implemented in QuickMD. In this version, uh, you can prepare QMM system. In this version, we are working hard to prepare that using QuickMD. Don't get so excited. It might take a long time to do that, but we are we are getting close. Um, from the name, this side, uh, let's say you cannot use you can use covars, but QuickMD cannot prepare for you automatically. You have to go open the text file and type by yourself. In that sense, lets you, but does does not let you do that automatically. Okay. Uh, from the top of my head, it's basically I would say those are major points that we can we cannot handle. And let's say more advanced uh, preparation steps were it's more advanced steps ahead. But in your force field, you have to apply special patches to your structure to prepare. Let's say uh, in groups or in groups that are connected in a different way. So that QuickMD is not yet it's prepared to apply patches but it, it's if it goes out of the norm or what is regularly used you cannot so once you go to more complex systems you have to get out of the GUIs and go command line okay so those are the things that I believe that you cannot do at the top of my head oh and graphene sheets or nanotubes no we are not supporting that yet. Uh, it doesn't support Amber Force Field yet as well. Or OPLS, just Charm 36. And I believe that it's that's so. all. Of course, there is much more, but the ones that I remember. Okay, so let's just let's just prepare it. Yeah? So whatever the configuration that you are changing will be overwritten in the file. On the file, so suppose I can change the temperature. On the basic mode, as you can see, you can change the temperature only the temperature and simulation time. Of course, on the CRM, the the pulling speed and the distance that you want to, to use. On the advanced run, you have this available for you, so equivalent. You have the same available to you, but you also have access to the file. So in there, you can you can change everything. You can do whatever everything wants. It's just like you know, you have a terminal uh, or a text editor, and you are changing your version. So, in theory, everything is available. Okay, because in the end, you are running MD. It's, it's preparing everything for that. If MD can do it, you, in theory, can. Do it. <laughs> yes. Uh, so can, but can, then you can also use a command line from that entry connection of this where you have. Oh yeah. yeah. And, and so can you also use QuickMD on your own computer? It has to show you. So I can, let me just, if I do this, uh, it's exactly the same DMD, exactly the same interface, everything is the same. Of course, as I said this morning, depending on uh, if you are on Windows and Mac, you have differences because you cannot have all the features available because they are more accessible, accessible to Linux, but in my, this is a Mac, and we can be here. Exactly the same, with slightly different appearance, but the the functions are here, exactly the same, they look the same, they behave the same, so you don't have to actually think about that you are on Windows or Linux. You work the same. Yeah. So we can actually prepare our our configuration PSF PDB on our own computer and just transfer them into the yes. cloud. I will show you how to do that easily because the way we can be prepares the the, the the input folder the input files is exactly for that. It's just you prepare everything, you send to Blue Waters, use one thousand nodes, and then you bring back you bring back and use your laptop to so, okay. So I'm back here, okay? And I want to prepare what some of you prepared yesterday, the ubiquity in explicit solvent um, and run live. Let's see if I can do it. 
First of all, uh, this, this is my personal taste. I don't like the black background of EMD, so I prefer to use white. So in, in quick MD, it's as easy as this. Select white background. So you don't have to go to display, background, color, da -da 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 -da. it's here. And the next version that you will have here, color scheme, that will basically set the materials that John talked this morning, those real cool materials and ambient occlusion, all, all those kind of cool things will be available by one uh, click inside Quick MD. For now, sadly, we have one. <laughs> Okay, next in one or two months, I hope that this will be, uh, be available. So to load uh, Ubiquiti directly from uh, PDB data bank, we just use one UBQ, that is the PDB code of, the, of Ubiquiti. We press load. We can be goes and fetch the, the PDB structure from the, from the protein data bank, loads back to the, to the MD and represents the structure in a way that you easily understand what you have in there. So, because in here, let me see if I have, yeah. So basically the water oxygen atoms represented this red sphere and the protein and new carton. So easily I can see, oh, I have protein and I have water. That's it, that's what my, my uh, structure uh, is composed uh, of. But if I want to see which kind of residues I have, uh, I, I can I have two different levels to assess my, my structure. I have the chain type selection, which tells me that I have, sorry, out of here, please. Okay. I have chain A and protein, and chain B and water. By the way, this is how you select in BMD. You do chain A and protein, chain A and water. So, and if I just go there and deselect water, the water not only disappear from my view, it will not take, it will not be part of my simulation. Okay? If I want to delete a part of my, of my structure, this is one way to do it. Let's say that I have 20 chains, I just want to use one or two. What I can do is come here, select none, and just, let's say, I want to select just chain A. So that's an easy and fast way to just select one chain of your structure, okay? I can show you later how to do this in the proper system. But let's say that I want to see the sequence of my protein and I want to manipulate this sequence. I go to the structure manipulation button and I open the structure and, man and manipulation and check. By the way, this is the center of manipulation, of structure manipulation inside QuickMD. If you want to delete, if you want to rotate, assign a different protonation state, this is the window to use, okay? So, and as you can see in here, it shows you a table containing all the residues of my protein, the res ID, the name of the residue, the chain. If you have multiple, you have, of course, multiple letters in here, and the type of molecule. This is important when you start to get nucleic acids in the same structure, you start to get ligands in a structure, it, you can sort this table uh, by name, by type, or whatever thing you want, so it's easy to access uh, the particular molecule inside your structure, or the residue inside your structure. And as you can see here, these are the, the table mode or the table options. So this is what I can do with my uh, structure. I can mutate in here. And how do I mutate? Let's say that I want to mutate uh, residue, uh, let's say, residue 24. See that appears here? So it highlights the residue in my structure, right? I don't know if you can see here, okay? And I select mutate, I select the residue, and it drops down the list of residues that I can mutate to. So if I want to mutate this residue to an alanine, I go there, I go to the top of the list, and select alanine. Okay, so now this residue is selected to be mutated to an alanine in the preparation phase. This is how you mutate a, a residue with QuickM. And then let's say that I want to change the protonation state. So uh, following the question 
but this morning, from this morning, uh, I did my calculations of the protonation states of my residues, the, uh, the pH that I want to simulate, and now I want to uh, manually assign. It has to be manual; it's not automatic yet. I hope. Um, and then I just select here protonation states. I come here, select this residue, and it tells me which protonation states do I have available for this residue. Okay, so you are now blowing up with your system and I don't know, deleting atoms so, while well, assigning protonation state. No, it tries to be as safe as possible and show you the options that you have. So and then let's say join this and this how I assign the protonation state to my glutamate. The other thing that you can do is delete part of your structure. I can come here, select the region of my protein, and then I say delete, and then apply, and it's not there anymore. Uh, okay, this is not biologically relevant. There are probably parts that you want to delete the terminal because there are extension, experimental uh, inserted extensions of your terminal of your protein that you don't want to simulate that, so you go there and just delete. Or you can add back, just by select the things that you want, put back, you select add and apply, and there you go. You have that section of your protein back on, and then you can rename residues that would be very important uh, if, your, if the PDB uh, the residues uh, containing your PDB doesn't match the names of the force field. You have to make them match. This is how you do it. You go, you rename the residue to the force field uh, residue name. You can edit atoms. That is important if you have a ligand and you have to change the atom names again to match the topology files from your force field. This is how you're going to do it. You will experiment this during the afternoon if you go through a quick tutorial. And then you can change types. Again, sometimes VMD can uh, identify the molecule inside your PDB as a nucleic, and it's not a nucleic residue, it's a natural uh, atom, or generally assigned as an atom uh, residue. And to assign the correct topology and residue name, you have to assign first the right type. For instance, you will see in the tutorial, most of the time, uh, GTP or GDP is identified as a nucleic residue, which is not a nucleic acid, it's a nucleotide. So, and then you change the type from nucleic to heterotype, and then you can assign the residue name to the proper topology name. Uh, what can you do more with this table? If you want an advanced mode, and you, of course you can do this in the tutorial, you will see two different fields appearing in this window. Uh, meaning the membrane builder and the patches. So if you want to build, build the membrane, you just select here the dimensions of your membrane. You place the yellow box uh, in, the, in the position of your membrane and you generate the membrane and that's it. Okay? This is, uh, and you'll see that it's very easy, but I just want to make this simulation going so we can, I can show you quick and actually doing something. Okay. So, and that's it. This is the kind of manipulation uh, that you can do to your structure, okay? Now let's prepare an easy run. I want to do implicit solvent just to make it run faster. Uh, no, uh, oh, you did explicit uh, yesterday, right? In the name data tutorial. Okay. Just, let's just do explicit. So what QuickMD will do is it will calculate the dimensions of your molecule and will build uh, a water box around and make sure that because it's using periodic boundary conditions, this the, the, the simulation cell is not seeing its own images, so it will not have let's say self interaction, okay? Which will which will create an artifact in your simulation. So since we are doing explicit solvent, let's bring our water bags, uh, our water molecules back. So here we are. And then we set the salt concentration at 0 0.15 uh, more and, and uh, chloride sodium as a salt. And we want to prepare this uh, run at 27 Celsius or 300 Kelvin for 20 nanoseconds. 
and we press live so we can see our simulation actually running. We hit prepare, we save it like test, we let QuickMD run, and while it's running, and you can see here, it's doing all the steps that you did manually, basically assigning the water molecules, preparing your PSF PDB, and assigning all the atoms, and just make sure that QuickMD is not lying to us, so it represents the waters, the water box as this yellow box, so you don't, you are not overwhelmed by the, the atoms, but we can actually show all of the waters like this. So you are not fine, waters are there. And by the way, if we want to, sh to change a representation inside QuickMD, we just have to come here to representation uh, column, select this, the, the type of uh, representation, the selection that we want to change, and change, let's say, to a lot of walls. And that's it. You don't need to go to graphical representation window. Everything is available to you by QuickMD. But because we cannot see anything code uh, change, uh, moving here, I just take out waters. So you can see our ions there as well. So it made our uh, salt concentration at 7.50. As I said, so uh, our ions, and let's just start the calibration. So one, once we start our calibration, means that it will first minimize, and then it will bring the, te the simulation temperature from close to be zero up to our temperature target. So it will let the system equilibrate and um, relax before we do our production simulation. So let's just hit prepare here. We tell, ask us how many uh, process, uh, CPUs we want to use. Uh, we can select all the CPUs in the machine, and we have eight in this one. And if we have GPUs, it will also use the GPUs. Okay? And of course, this is an, our Amazon image. We have GPUs finally, and we want to use the GPUs. And then we press OK. And in here, you will see an error appearing. But this is this doesn't mean that VMD is a bug, but it's not, mm -hmm. uh, saying that it's trying to connect. Basically, it's trying to connect to NAMD while NAMD is running. So it, you will see this uh, message appearing several times and until it connects to NAMD. Once it connects, the, that message will not appear anymore, and you will be able to see your simulation running in VMD. Okay? So only if another uh, message appears before these warnings that you have to worry about. Before this error connecting to local host for 3000, that means that PMD is just trying to connect to MD. Only then. OK, so now MD is running, as you can see in here, finally. Licorice, let me just change my representations here. So you can actually see the simulation running. So at this point, it is just run, uh, doing the minimization, and then we'll go to the interface. Yeah. So when we were doing a solvent, uh, adding the solvent, it uh, specified the box size by default, seeing the size of protein? Yes, it's based on the, size of I would protein. say it's the longest distance uh, between two atoms of the protein. Oh. So you don't need to specify any box size? On the basic mode, you don't. The In the advanced mode, you can specify the buffer. Let's say, after this uh, longest distance inside your protein, I want to add this buffer. And when I saw this uh, easy learn mode, mm -hmm. for this, the ionization was only due to, I mean, the option with potassium and sodium chloride. Yes. So you could have more options, you can add those by or by default is only two of them. <coughs> This, these are the two available right now. Of course, we want to develop this further and include it more and more. Okay. Okay. And just to show you, uh, okay, now the simulation is running, right? I can perform, perform some uh, live analysis. For instance, I can uh, calculate my RMSD while my simulation is running. And it will pop up here. It just a little bit this window. 
which is huge. Okay. okay, here we go. So now it's showing my RMA scene here. Okay, so as long as the simulation is running, I am evaluating my RMSD when it's running. Fine. So let's say that I want to see my temperature. How is my temperature uh, evolving along the time? And I can just press temperature, calculate, and basically it's retrieving the temperature value from them. So this is, as you can, oh, you cannot see that well. So for now, it's 59 kelvins. And it will go up to 300 uh, in one, one point something nanoseconds. So and that's the kind of things that you can do with the game. Also, you can export this plot to XMBrace, Excel, SPSS, where everything you want, and do the statistical analysis of it. So it will export as a, a text file or actually export directly to XMGrace. And now showing you the, what you ask about copying the files to, to a different location. So if I'm going to my home directory, that's where I created my test.quickmd file, which is here. By the way, this is a file that you, if you want to load the previous simulation that you performed, this is a file that you have to load inside QuickMD. And then QuickMD will load all the options, all the steps that you did to prepare and present to you. So you always know what you did, what residue you updated, what protonation state you assigned, uh, how many waters you add to your simulation, how many ions, all these kind of things are, are presented in this file. But again, once you create this test.quickmd file, it also creates a folder with the same name, test, okay? Which is here. If you go inside, you will have two folders and one file. One folder is uh, called run, which contains all the files that you need to run the simulation. So this is the folder if I want to run in, in blue waters, let's say. I just have to copy this run to, to blue waters and execute MD from there. All the parameters files, all the configuration files, PDB, PSF are inside this folder, as I showed it to you. So let me, how can I change the view here to list? List, okay. So as you can see, you have PRM files here, right? Which are the parameters. You have configuration files, which are the configuration files that we can be created to you. Uh, you have the trajectories from the from the simulation, the .dcd files that you load to BMD. They are here as well. The log files of your simulation, and so on and so on. And Setup folder is the, all the files necessary to prepare your system. Okay, they are here. The original PDB, the one uh, downloaded directly from the protein data bank, the PDB with the selection that you wanted, and so on and so on. And all the topology files as well, and the last but not the least, this text file. You see. Uh, this text file, the dot. Uh, info MD file is the equivalent of the dot quick MD file but in the text mode. Basically in a in sentence <laughs> it tells you what you did to your system. Meaning that the residue glutamate ID twenty four chain A was mutated to an alanine. Okay. And uh, residue uh, glutamate uh, ID thirty one uh, thirty four uh, was assigned to loop P. The protonation, protonated state of glutamate. As well as tell you the dimensions of your water box, the position of your water box, and how many waters were included in those in, in the preparation. Okay? And as well, how many uh, chlorides and sodium ions, as well as all the methods that, that you are using. Okay? MD simulation was performing uh, using MD, right? 
So you can read it. This is basically your meta section of your paper. You can copy and paste. Okay. Okay. And if you don't know which reference to use, you have the reference right here. Okay. So it's doing everything for you. We, we once had a button write my paper inside PKD, but we decided to take it out. Uh, but we did half of your job is here. And as well, it also records the analysis that you do after you load your simulation. Can do everything for you. But, and I'm, I want to emphasize this, does not replace the user knowledge in terms of science. You have to know what you want to do and if it's feasible or not. I just want to have another remark. Sometimes uh, some users ask me, how do I know if, again, <coughs> this was asked even yesterday, how do I know if my system is stable or uh, has um, stabilized before I run my production simulation? Again, this is about you. You can look at energies, you can uh, look at RMSDs, hydrogen bonds, and then evaluate if it's uh, equilibrated. Even though you perform an equilibration step, doesn't mean that your system is equilibrated, okay? That is just the name of the protocol. You have to give a name. Equilibration seems to be the more accurate, but doesn't mean that in the end it's completely equilibrated. You have to probably do several minimizations, minimization steps several equilibration steps, and then your system is good to go, okay? And this can take, for instance, I did a project that I equilibrated my system for 250 nanoseconds. Only after that, I start to collect frames to actually do uh, my analysis. So it really depends from system to system, uh, and how, how uh, good is your initial structure, and so on and so on. Okay, so I'm done from here. Do, do you guys have any questions? I have a quick question. So, Please go. Uh, when you're calculating the salt concentration, like when you ask it to put in 0.5 molar per, vol per liter, how do you calculate the volume of, of, like, how do you calculate how much, how many waters you need to add? Like, are you considering, like, the protein atoms and the waters, or is it just the size of the box, or? It's considered the number of molecules of water that you place. Okay. So what QuickMD does, it first creates your, your protein structure, then it adds water, and then according to the number of water molecules, he evaluates how many uh, ions, atoms it has to place, okay. and then how it, 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 uh, it calculates the concentration. And by the way, you can uh, re uh, recreate all these steps using BMD plugins. So, because BMD, what BMD is doing is managing several plugins at the same time. It's calling out on PSF to create the structure, it's calling ionize to place the ions, it's calling solvate to place the, the water box, it's calling membrane, and so on and so on and so on. So, you can do this, BMD does in the automatic way, logging everything, recording everything that you do, so you will always remember. And one thing, that's good that QuickMD remembers me. So I am the developer, or the one that does the code, but of course the QuickMD team is way bigger, and if you look to our paper, it's way bigger. Rafael Bernard is one of the other developers in terms of, that's how it's <laughs> uh, in terms of all the met uh, methodology behind, all the, you know, if what we are doing is the correct way. And Til Rudak, that is a former uh, postdoc of the group, is also uh, part of the co uh, core team that developed QuickMD. So all of us will be able to answer your questions regarding QuickMD, and most of the times they will redirect me. But anyway, <laughs> so I'm the one that has work. Just to finish my talk, don't forget, close VMD, uh, QuickMD first. So QuickMD will terminate in MD. We will not have and you run it in the back uh, ways in your computer, right? Then uh, you close uh, BMD, but because I'm using my Amazon image, I have to tell you this. Then terminate your instance. Don't waste money with idle or useless images, okay? So just go instance state, terminate, and make sure that you are terminating your own image. Don't mess up with your colleague's work. Uh, 
Okay, now it's shutting down, it's terminating, and everything that I did until now just disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> okay.